Good morning. It is September the 9th, uh, shortly after 10 in the morning, and I am sitting down to do a journal. So we had a great weekend. It was very filled with family and lots of kind of fun little wild adventures. <laughs> Just here in our own backyard. I made a big wreath, which I guess I can insert a picture of maybe. And I made it out of, I think they're called silver dollar plants. Money plant, I've also heard them called penny plants too, but they have a very pretty leaf. I can kind of, okay, let me just show you right here. Yeah, so the wreath is actually just behind there, just outside. <laughs> But I put that together and we had just a major relaxing time. It was really nice. Other than that, I've just been kind of slowly puttering around this place. We moved in for the two weeks that my boss is away. So we have been, we were left with like a, I was left with a bit of a list of things to do, but you know, no, nothing too bad. And so I've been just slowly puttering away at things and I plan on doing a major clean for the rest of the week because I just want to have things sparkling when they get here. And I have a few meals that I think they might like that I want to put into the freezer when they get home from vacation. So I've just got that to do over the next couple of days. Besides that, I have been processing wool, I have been knitting a sweater, I have been dreaming of a lot of projects, but, you know, that takes up time too, you know, just having to come up with things. I love the daydreaming aspect of crafting. <laughs> Sometimes I spend a lot of time in that daydreaming place rather than actually in crafting. So... I have been spinning this, this is what the fiber looks like, and it is from a fleece that I got from the Lower Mainland Sheep Producers Association in their fleece auction this year, and so I tried to, I've got the majority of the fleece completely washed, and now I am did a little sample because I kind of wanted to figure I wanted to figure out how I wanted to knit it. I wanted to figure out what the fabric was gonna feel like. Cause I had trepidation buying a long wool fleece. I've worked a lot with more fine fleeces or fine wools in the past. Most of my spinning has been with fine fleece. So I wanted to see what long wool was actually gonna be like because I was worried it was gonna be itchy or or prickly or something, but it's not at all. It's so soft. I also, I'm just gonna like go this right there. <laughs> Received this in the mail. This is the sample. The woman very kindly sent along the sample to me of this Bromney cross fleece that she had done a wash on and I got the lock so it's just had a, it's got a bit of lanolin left in it so it's still got some stickiness to it, some grease, but it's in this more pale gray next to the fleece that I got. So this is a Gotland Romney cross with something, this one. And so she knit this at a far denser gauge with a much more, a much beefier yarn. And so you can see just the difference in the way that these fabrics act when they are moved and placed on things. And so this is a much more pliable fabric. It has a lot of movement to it. It's very kind of floppy. Whereas this is a lot stiffer um, and you can, you know, just see how they just, 
they sit differently. They, this is far more structured, whereas this has more drape and looseness to it. And I am a fan of, really a fan of this. This feels like to me like this would make a like a bulletproof garment, which would be great for a coat. And because I'm considering trying to keep as much of the lanolin in, like I've, at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this because it is sticky. But the more that I think about it, the more that I learn about what lanolin's properties are and how it is, you know, it's a water repellent sort of thing. And in this sort of climate in the west coast of Canada, we've got rain. So... A, a warm and slightly water repellent garment might be kind of cool. So, but I don't know how you really even care for a lanolin rich garment. How do you, do you never wash it? Like that's kind of nasty. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could use eucalyptus because eucalyptus actually would put some of the lanolin back into it, but certainly not how much there is in there right now, especially if you wash it in warmer water. Anyway, there's, in this fleece that I have washed, I there's barely any lanolin. There's probably nothing even left in it. It's very, it feels very squeaky clean. So I filled a bobbin over the last, I guess, nine days. And I haven't weighed it yet. I think it's, I think it's going to be near by like 80 grams. Yeah. And... So that's the spinning that I've been doing. I mean, I guess I, I should have brought stuff over with me. That would have been far more prepared looking. <laughs> but I never am prepared when I sit down for things. I just grab my cup of whatever and I sit down and start yapping away. But my sweater's right over there. So I'm going to go get it. I'm going to move my shirt. Here it is. My sweater. Ooh. Yeah. Sleeve number one is done. Sleeve number two is just about there. I'm just about at the ribbing for this for the cuff. And the bottom here, I made a split hem, which I made high-low. <laughs> so that is me trying to be up to date. <laughs> Not really. I, I was thinking about the cropped, why crop, with a crop thing with a split hem, I was thinking about movement and thinking about how the fabric would sit on my body. And how if I had it joined at both sides, how it might kind of like pucker up a little bit easier if I when I sit down or things like that. Because I'm quite short-waisted, so I can just imagine the top of the cropped sweater hitting the top of my hips and like just bunching up. So I thought, I wanted to lay a little bit flatter. So I just did a split hem. And so now when I... I mean, I hope it will, that will work. It will kind of just kind of allow a little bit more room for my <laughs> love handles <laughs> when I sit down. And, you know, um, just drape a little bit easier. I don't know. I just thought movement and trying to get the fabric to lay nicely. I wish that love handles was not such a, had not been used in such a nasty way because it's kind of a cute word. <laughs> but people have used it as you know, a bad way of describing these juicier bits. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Um. I brought a significant amount of textile stuff with me to this house. 
I was so hopeful that I was going to get so much more done, but there's a lot that I've put on my to-do list for around here. So it's been kind of funny staying in the place that is my place of work, sort of. I mean, it is. But it, it kind of, I feel like I've made it my home a little bit over the last two weeks. And it was, it was just so nice to craft here and to stay here. The light here. Good lighting when you're a crafter, when you're doing detailed work at all, it means so much just to be able to very clearly see what you're working on. And with my knitting, I feel like I can knit so fast here because it's just so easy to see what's going on. I guess what I'm saying is that our condo, it's not nearly as bright as this. <laughs> So it's nice to have something, it's a place where it's just, I don't know, it just feels like you can really get into your work and it's just nice to be able to know exactly where you're pointing your needle. So I brought this sewing machine here, I brought fabric, I brought my rotary cutting board. <laughs> Very much I have been wanting to make myself a pair of pants and make my husband a tunic. He likes to dress like he is from, I don't know, Alexander the Great's time, just around there. <laughs> and wants like a mixture of Mongolian dress <laughs> and Roman. So it's, it's funny because we're going to design it completely from scratch, this tunic. He wants one that's very simple. It's very simple construction. It's basically like two rectangles with a, some armholes and a neck hole. Like it's very straightforward. But then there's some long sleeve things that are more like snug fitting and more tailored but long with interesting closures, you know, asymmetrical closures and stuff. And I'm excited to try and design these things, intimidated greatly, mainly because it's the fabric usage of things, but I have been gifted some fabric that was from a thrift store and there's quite a lot of meterage to it. So I figured just go with the crazy thrift store fabric to start, you know, cost next to nothing and um, I won't feel terrible if I totally mess it up. <laughs> because I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to sewing, but I'm learning and I've got some books that I've looked at, but mainly it's just thank goodness for YouTube and for people who put together very well filmed and described tutorials. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so, but now I think what I've got despite that I loaded on my to-do list too full to actually practically get any or get many of these things done. I know what I want to be working on this fall and this winter. So that's what this little staycation has illuminated for me. So I want cropped sweaters. <laughs> I want to knit hand spun sweaters. I want to I want to spin yarn for my friends and for my sister. I just I want to share these textures so bad. You know, and I admit it that I while I'm not I don't feel like I am taking on the this whole idea of starting up like a yarn business or a dyeing business or a whatever a hand knit garment business, you know, I'm not really thinking about it in such a serious sense now. I can just think about, oh, you know what? There's some things that I would just really love to be able to offer, but not make a big thing out of it, you know, like not try and make endless, endless amounts of one particular thing. So I haven't been thinking about collections or anything like that. I've just been thinking as in terms of 
what would be a fun thing to add to someone's stash. So I first am thinking of what can I add to my sister's stash and what can I add to my other knitting friend's stashes. But if I really like making them, maybe I'll make more. <laughs> and one of the things that I've thought about doing is doing basically mini skein sets of hand spun in all sorts of different types of wools, all sorts of different colors, all sorts of different textures, and putting those up. Because I think that would be really fun. It would keep things, I need the variety. I think that's something I really enjoy about this craft that I miss when I started trying to come up with products and stuff like that is I've, I felt like I really needed to you know, know what my line was and have those sort of things really firmly figured out. Sorry, I'm kind of looking around the house in a, in a weird way. I'm looking behind me in the camera and stuff because this morning I discovered that one of the windows, which we just left kind of cracked open, the screen had popped out completely and it kind of made me worry for a second that maybe an animal had jumped into the house. <laughs> And so now I'm kind of on the watch out just for some little critter coming. Because <laughs> I think it would just be, and it would be really funny if a little like raccoon just popped up from the back of the couch in the middle of this. <laughs> I mean, it would be terrifying for me. <laughs> it would make for some hilarious footage. Anyway, so for, I just wanted to record a little short journal today. And I'm going to just start posting these on YouTube because I've just lost all of my sense of inhibition, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I've got a lot to do for the next few days and uh, I look forward to just having little moments of checking in and sharing my progress because at, the, at some point in the day, whether or not it's going to be late at night or, you know, first thing in the morning, I... I'm going to do a little bit of crafting, and I know that I'm going to want to share some of that stuff. So, yeah. Whenever I have progress, that's when I'll turn on the camera. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>